Hey everyone, Cece once again for another Love Summer Art video. This is my third canvas and as you can see I kind of gessoed over a blue background. Um, I'm going to gesso some more. I'm going to use heavy gesso, like super heavy gesso. I'm going to apply this with a palette knife. The only thing I know for today is that I want to make flowers because I said I was going to make flowers yesterday. Um, however, the how and with what <laughs> and how it's gonna look, I have no idea. So I'm applying extra heavy gesso because I do want a lot of texture. I'm applying it with a palette knife and of course this is gonna take a while to dry. Now the extra heavy gesso will do two things for me. It will hide that blue that I was testing out um, yesterday while I was doing my other canvas. And it will also help me get some texture onto this um, canvas. So here's the texture that I got from using extra heavy gesso and a palette knife and I make sure that I had a lot of movement in there. I have two pieces of plastic canvas. This is the circular one. I have a, a smaller one and I love this um, the shape, this um, the pattern that I get from here. So let me just show you before the gesso has had time to dry I'm just going to go in and go like this. Check out that cool pattern that I get. I'm going to use the big one kind of like here. Zoom out. And I make sure that I'm not pressing evenly so that I don't get like one big perfect circle because I don't want that. And then I'm going to use the smaller one in random places. And I love that. This is awesome. Another thing I want to do is I want to scribble some words in the background and not very in, in eligibly. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say intelligibly. Eligibly or elig eligible. <laughs> you know, words that you can't really tell that they're words. Craft resist letters. Oops, there we go. Uh, by Tim Holtz. I'm going to just use these letters and maybe just like embed them in there. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason as to how they are placed or if they mean anything to me because uh, they don't. That's just to balance things out because I do have words there and I have nothing towards the bottom and I feel like the bottom should be heavier uh, than the top. There we go. And the intention is to remove them before they dry so that I'm left with just the imprint. I'm not sure that it's going to work. It'll be a discovery. And let's try one in there somewhere here. Okay. So, I've essentially taken the letters that or numbers that were falling off. And I'm going to grab let's grab a paper piercer, see what I get when I remove them. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave them there and I'm going to gesso over that.
And because the gesso is still wet, what I think I'm going to do is add the flowers right away because whatever I add on top of that is going to stick to it. So let me see if I can grab some fibers. See this? This is like eyelet ribbon, I think that's what they're called. So I'm gonna use those as stamps because I think they're fun and I will never use these. I think I'm gonna use that for the flowers because it's nice and fluffy. And if I can find the beginning of it, um, I can twirl them around and make I can twirl this and make a nice round funky flower look at that oh I'll add the stems first and that will determine the placement of my flowers and you see how the gesso is still not dry Okay, here's the flower that I just balled up. I'm gonna add a small one here. Let's add some gesso. This time around, I think I'm gonna use just straight up regular gesso. If I use extra heavy gesso, I think it's going to hide too much of the fibers. up of all that goodness and texture I love that you can see the word here which I can't even remember what it is it's okay I love those flowers the numbers at the bottom very interesting and that trim for the stems so I need to let this dry I'll be right back for you but of course I think this is going to take a few hours all right so this is not absolutely 100% dry. I can feel it's still damp, but the surface is pretty um, solid, I would say. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off. So I have an assortment <laughs> of India ink. This is the Dr. P.H. Martin's, uh, the Bombay India ink. And I'm going to use that to colorize the flowers. I kind of have the idea though that I should do the stems first. So you know what, I'm going to take grass green and I'm going to drizzle a little bit of green down here on the stems. And if I put water on here, is that going to trickle down? Um, it's a little slow. I'm going to need more ink because it doesn't really go all the way down. Oh, now we're talking. Okay. And the cool thing about the India ink is that it dries permanent. So once this is set, it's not going to move, which is one big plus because I'm not sure exactly uh, what I'm going to do to it, to the whole, the rest of the canvas. I like the wicking that's happening here. It kind of gives the illusion that there are leaves attached to the flowers, which is nice. All right. I'm going to do the third one. This is fine. I 
I've never really played with the India inks. Um, I have used uh, black and white in the past to create some accents, but not to the point where I'm actually uh, colorizing full on some elements of a canvas. Um, I think I'm going to dry this before I colorize the flowers just because I don't want the colors to mingle too much. Uh, when you're using fibers, if they're not natural, be careful about the heat source that you're putting on. Uh, this is super hot, so if I put that really, really close to the fibers and they're not natural, they're going to shrink. Um, I hit this with a hair dryer at the cool setting just to try to remove, remove a bit of the humidity and um, that's why this is set more than it should because uh, the last time I touched this it was around 3 o'clock this afternoon and it's now 8.30 at night and if I hadn't uh, used the blow dryer it would still be very uh, unstable. Now it's, it's stable enough so that I can work on it. So I'm going to use the magenta on the top here. That's fun. Um, not dark enough for my taste. Whoa. Now I'm creating brown here. I don't want that. This is an experiment, by the way. I've never done this before. So, uh, yeah. I guess in the middle it goes all the way down inside the fibers and that's why the color sort of disappears. Yeah, see that's that's what I wanted to do. So maybe I was uh, too scared to do the one at top that's what I want. I want the fibers on that are sticking out to pick up all that good ink. <coughs> Excuse me. so much fun. Everything is fun. It's always fun. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with a bit of yellow and see what happens. I have an urge to add uh, teal to the stamps. So I'm going for it. Because I might add teal to the background. And I like uh, teal and green when they're mixed together. They make fun stuff. Oh, look at this. Uh, do I control it or do I let it go like that? I don't know. Maybe a tad. I don't know. It's kind of cool though the way the the magenta meets the teal and makes that beautiful purple. This flower is definitely crying for help. <laughs> help me! Uh, yeah, I don't like. 
like that brown happening here. So I think I'm going to stop this one here. I'm going to heat set that and then I'll zap it again with some teal. But I like the other ones. This is cool. Okay, I'm not sure that the India ink inside the flowers is, are, is completely dry, but I can't wait. So I'm going to do my glazing and then I'll come back to the flowers. So I have acrylic glazing liquid. This is a satin finish and burnt umber. So I'm going to mix the two of them to create a glaze. I'm going to let that sit for about a minute, minute and a half. And then I'll remove it. So I got about equal parts of both. To start removing and what I want to happen is that I want the paint to be um, to remain inside the um, texture I'm going to put some art guard on my hands because I'm about to color or finger paint with fluorescent magenta and fluorescent pink paint. Woohoo! I love these colors by the way. These two together are amazing. If all goes well, I can pick up from the cover. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh yeah. This is going to sit on top of the fibers, definitely. Okay, I have this bottle of fluorescent yellow. It's called Scorching Yellow <laughs> from America. And I wonder what would happen if I add a little bit in the middle. Would they play nice with the pink? Would that make like, can I get like an orangey color? Woo! Oh, I like that. Hold on, let me zoom in because it's tough to see. Oh, check it out. Oh, I like that. Okay, more, more yellow. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, nice. All right. Uh oh, went overboard with that one, but check that out. Oh my goodness. All right. That's what I'm doing. These flowers now are like so funky and so bright. They're alive. <gasps> okay. 
I need to make sure that I don't go overboard, but seriously, I could not not do it. Okay, and more baby wipes. <laughs> I feel like I want to add a touch of metallic, but I'm not sure if I should go for the copper or the gold. I am leaning more towards the gold for this one. done. I'm really liking the way this, this turned out. Um, I don't think I've ever done this type of work. Uh, grunge meets bold and bright. I love, love, love it. And um, this concludes <laughs> the hashtag love summer art event. I hope that you have had a chance to go look for these wonderful artists that are on the YouTube land. Um, Unfortunately, I was so busy creating and editing and with my regular day job that um, I didn't have a chance to go look too much, but I certainly will this week because the hashtag love summer art is not disappearing. In fact, all the videos are going to be staying there for as long as YouTube is there. And um, so I'm going to do a little bit of um, um, channel hopping this week and uh, respond to some of the comments. Uh, you guys have been wonderful. You've you've been asking questions and commenting and it's uh, truly appreciated. So I hope that this canvas inspires you to uh, go and do um, and play. Just play. Have fun with it, please. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. As usual, thank you so much for watching and I will see, see you later. Bye!